you. Uh, this, the timing of this development is quite interesting, right? Because it comes on the foothills of Glasgow and COP26. I'm guessing you're getting a lot of these questions, but how do you respond to the climate groups out there that say big fossil fuel developments like this one are running counter to what was committed at, at Glasgow? It's a, <clears throat> it's a fantastic question, Yvonne. Uh, the reality is this kind of development, uh, significant LNG development, is absolutely part of the solution to the climate change challenge. Uh, so when we look around the customer nations where we sell our product, and that's largely Japan, Korea, China, all of those nations are still heavily dependent on coal. Uh, and one of the quickest ways to, for a nation to reduce their emissions is to switch uh, their energy system from coal to gas fired. So uh, we absolutely believe LNG is part of the mix. And when we look at the Scarborough project specifically, the Scarborough Reservoir has very little CO2 in it, uh, less than 0.1%. Uh, and the train that we propose to build or that we plan to build at uh, the Pluto site uh, will be the most energy efficient train in Australia. So from a carbon perspective, it's, it's extraordinarily competitive for our customers compared to many other sources of LNG. Well, we have seen the likes of the IEA, for example, Meg, talk about how the demand for gas is just going to start peaking or may peak as early as 2025 if nations do follow through on these net zero uh, commitments. What gives you confidence that we're still going to see a market like that uh, or a market for you uh, on this project for the next decade or so? Look, there are many different forecasts of how the world will meet its climate change ambitions. Uh, what we've seen actually with the IEA, even in their net zero 2050 scenario, is that continued investment in oil and gas development will be required. Uh, the nations of the world are currently very heavily dependent on oil and gas, uh, and gas offers the opportunity to reduce carbon emissions while continuing to provide reliable and affordable energy to those nations. Uh, are you looking at additional options then, Meg, uh, from Woodside's side to examine to how to limit the greenhouse gas emissions from this project? Yeah, so we've done a number of different things. Uh, we have our own net zero ambition. Uh, we are on a pathway to net zero by 2050, and we've set ourselves near and midterm decarbonization goals. So we intend to reduce our net emissions by 15 percent by 2025 and by 30 percent by 2030. Uh, we've stood up a carbon business to support us uh, in terms of meeting those objectives. And as we've gone through the design of Scarborough and Plain Pluto Train 2, we have taken a number of decisions to ensure that the facilities that we're building are particularly carbon efficient. Uh, so one of the things we want to do is make sure that when we start up the plant, we are as uh, emissions efficient as we possibly can be. Uh, and then we're looking at some things like putting solar, using solar to power our Pluto LNG site. Uh, that's another significant step to reducing our emissions. So we absolutely believe we have a role to play and we've made our own emissions reduction commitments, uh, but we still absolutely believe that LNG is an important fuel for the future. Uh, and in the near future, though, do you worry, Meg, that there could be some kind of shortage in natural gas if there isn't enough money and investment spent on upstream production? Or, or do you think the current investments that you're seeing, including the likes of this Scarborough project, are enough to meet demand in the future? Look, it's a, it's a fascinating question, and I think one of the things that we're seeing with near-term gas prices is a bit of a consequence of uh, reduced investment over the past few years, as well as changing demand pictures. Um, so there, there absolutely is a risk that if uh, we do not continue, we, we meaning the world, do not continue to invest in gas developments, that there will be shortages and, and there will be volatility in pricing. And uh, at the end of the day, that's not good for any of either consumers or producers. We'd like to have certainty and we'd like to have uh, the ability to generate a good return. But um, we do want to make sure that our customers have that uh, reliable supply that they seek. What does what the financing climate look like now, Meg? I, I'm just wondering, with, with big gas projects like this, is, is it becoming more difficult to get the funding from these finance institutions, given just the ESG pressures that they face? What, what does it look like to you? Look, I think one key proof point to that question is the announcement we made last week to sell down 49% of Pluto train to, to global infrastructure partners. Uh, GIP is a very significant infrastructure investor with a huge uh, portfolio of assets under management. 
Uh, and the bankers that they talk to and the investors that they're talking to understand the role of LNG in a decarbonizing world. So we absolutely are able to access the financing we need to support this type of development. In terms of other projects, uh, there are some questions regarding BHP's Gulf of Mexico portfolio. Are you committed to developing that, or are you looking into some offers here uh, for that side of the business? Look, one of the things that is really fantastic about the merger with BHP Petroleum's business is the fact that it provides us with geographic diversity. Uh, their business has a number of tier one assets in not just in Australia, but in the Gulf of Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago, Mexico. Uh, and we, we look forward to uh, creating value for our shareholders by appropriately developing those assets. Uh, and, and we do view the Gulf of Mexico assets particularly as a core part of our portfolio going forward. Okay, so, so you're not fielding any potential buyers, you're not talking to any other types of partners there on that? Oh, well, it would be premature to talk about any of that. Uh, we're still uh, a ways away from completing the deal. We've got uh, a few regulatory approvals that we need and a shareholder vote, which is teed up for the second quarter of next year. So we expect that we'll, we'll complete the merger in, uh, in the second quarter of 2022. Okay, last question to, to you, Meg, uh, from me. Do you think Woodside, does you expect that Scarborough and these other gas projects uh, under your portfolio, are, are, you, are they likely to continue producing uh, up until 2050 and beyond? What, what is your, your crystal ball kind of outlook now? Look, we think the market for LNG will be very robust for decades into the future. And if you reflect on the size of the world's energy needs uh, and the complexity of the world's energy needs, um, the world will continue to need significant sources of energy out into the 2050s. Now, we absolutely recognize we need to be taking steps to decarbonize. Um, we've been investing ourselves in things like biosequestration, and we've made some announcements recently about work that we're doing to, uh, to explore opportunities for carbon capture and sequestration. So we absolutely need to be taking steps to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. Uh, but the world's energy needs will uh, need to continue to be met um, by a variety of sources, and natural gas, we believe, will be absolutely part of that mix.